Is anyone here from Baltimore? All right, it's safe. Let's do Go over here and Niners over here, okay? Go! Go! Okay, because I think we might have a bigger crowd than uh, they'll have if they win the Super Bowl here. So this is where they all come together. So this is the prelude. So uh, I was just wondering, last year we were asking where different people were from and I neglected to ask if anyone was here from the East Bay and my friend John McKenna pointed that out but so I wanted to see if there's anyone here that came on BART from the East Bay. Yeah. How about Sacramento? Anyone here from Sacramento? How about San Diego? That's, that's, a, good, that's a good amount of people coming from Fresno! Reno! Reno! New Mexico! Right here in the front! Visalia! And of course, Stockton! see what we see this is by far the largest crowd it's wonderful I know that um, I know probably most of us were pretty bummed on uh, November 9th after the election and we're feeling kind of discouraged and after kind of really spent some time I think grieving and the pro-life movement uh, it's time to get busy and you all are here showing that you're ready to get busy Woo! busier I think maybe uh, God just wanted us to know that uh, we have more work to do. And so uh, with uh, Father Irving, I think has set a really great standard. Uh, 500, over 500 babies have been saved from the effort of one parish. Uh, we have 90 parishes in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. So if we were doing 500 times 90, 45,000, right? Can you imagine? It wouldn't matter what the laws were. And so that's what we need to, that's what we need to keep going for. We've got some great resources here for crisis pregnancy centers. Um, but it's, it's all about what you all are doing and you keep doing and you come back and you come with your groups and you have your pro-life clubs and you're reaching out to women who've had abortions and you're reaching out to women who are in crises and we're building the culture of life. And it's awesome nine years later to see so many of your beautiful faces up here. So thank you so much for coming. So just one little piece of housekeeping. Unfortunately, um, along the route, there are there is um, are people that are demonstrating against uh, uh, the Walk for Life. So we want to make sure that everybody remembers that we have a wonderful reputation of peaceful uh, response and, and peacefully walking for life. And so please don't engage. Um, it's just it's not a time for a conversation. Unfortunately, there's also someone who is. Um, uh, with the pro-life movement who's against our wishes has put a jumbotron up along the route that shows some graphic images. We're gonna try and kind of shield it, but we just wanted to let you know it's a fifth at market for those with young children to just kind of, um, you know, if, you, if you'd like to, to uh, keep those uh, images from being uh, visible to your kids. But anyway, I, it's with great, great joy that I am introducing our first speaker, Elaine Riddick, and her story is one that's unfortunately very uh, is is somewhat common and, and not and not told. And we're so um, appreciative that she wanted to come and, and speak in this. I think this is the largest crowd you said, Elaine. Oh, yeah. yeah, but she'll do great. And so let's give her. Uh, Elaine was a victim of eugenics in North Carolina. The the North Carolina the eugenics board of North Carolina sterilized her unknown, without her permission when she was 14 years old. So she's here to talk to us um, about how she's been building a culture of life. So let's give her a very warm welcome. Gosh, thank you. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm not going to start because I'm here to talk about eugenics 
and I'm here to talk about what it feels like to be a pro-lifer. Thank God. Thank God. I was 14. I was raped. I was from a poverty area. My grandmother was illiterate. The social worker goes to my grandmother and coerces her into signing away my womanhood. But my grandmother being illiterate, she did not understand what sterilization tubercle ligation was. So she signed away my womanhood. Signing away my womanhood, meaning that she gave the authorities, my government, the right to go into my body and invade it. By my means saying invading my body means killing off my womb so I wouldn't be able to produce children. They aborted all of my children, every single one. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and his image. If you give a person a gun, that's murder if they shoot you and kill you. If you abort a baby, that's murder. What's the difference? Murder is murder. There's no difference. The state of North Carolina started sterilizing. They sterilized 7,600 people. Young boys and young girls, women and men. 2,999 little boys and girls under the age of what? Under the age of 19. Little boys and girls, eight, nine years old, their bodies are taken away from them. Their manhood, their womanhood, their womb, their babies, they killed them. They killed their womb. So this is why I am a pro-lifer. My government, government uh, California killed over 20,000, I mean uh, sterilized over 20,000 people. The United States says that they only sterilized 65,000 people. That's what they have recorded. What about the, un the ones that's not recorded? Atlanta, Georgia, 3,300. Virginia, 11,000. Hey, we're almost up to 65,000 now. Somebody don't know how to do the math. If, 30, if 32 states within the United States did this to its citizens, then somebody got lost in a hurry. You know, this, I'm sure it's over a millions of people. Okay, we want to talk about the eugenics for a few minutes, for a minute. The eugenics was a, a group of men, every state had to abort the eugenics board, okay? The eugenics were the ones that okay and approved for a child to be sterilized or the babies to be aborted, okay? So here's what the eugenics did. The lady, the social worker goes to the eugenics board. He, she tells him, well, this person is feeble-minded and I think this person should be sterilized. I think their womb should be taken from them. So the eugenics board, not re really reading the history of the person, agrees to do it. That's not good government. This is not good government. Everybody has the right to life. Every baby, every child. One thing I want you to know is that God planted a seed in your womb, in your body. When he told the woman to go out and be fruitful, he told the man to go out and sweat by his bra to support his family. How can your government do this to you? How can they play God with your life? How can they take this away from you? Planned Parenthood. 
they're not God. Margaret Singer is not God. And I'm going to tell you something that I do want you to leave with today. I want you to know that if God gave you breath, if he blew his breath in your body, then he gave you, the, he wanted you to be here. He wanted you to be here. It was your time to be on this face of this earth. It was your time. He wanted you to be on earth. He planted that seed in that body for you to be on earth. But when here come these uh, abortionists coming and saying, kill that seed. You're killing God's will. You're killing life. You're killing God's life. None of it belonged to you. None of it belonged to me. It all belonged to God. It all belonged to God. It all belonged to God. I don't have the right to do nothing. All I have the right to do is breathe God's breath. I, that's, what, that's the only thing I have the right to do. Thank you.